by the restless sea. We are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bellkeeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. of a world gone by speak again the immortal tale the great plague my name's C. Farrell and as I've often said I'm willing to learn learn to do anything as long as I can earn me enough to keep a roof over me head and food in me stomach it was at lunchtime yesterday that I first came to this blasted town in Newport in Monmouthshire and took myself to the nearest inn to see about a bite for the inner man. I stood at the doorway looking in and who do I see but me old friend and pal, Grigsby, the greatest thief what ever lived. Yes, it was Grigsby, looking as if he'd never slept on a London bench in his life, eating as full and hearty a meal as I've ever seen. At the same time I see them, he sees me, and he shouts, Fado! Well, well, well. Grigsby, my boy, you're looking as well as the Prince of Wales. I'm fit. <laughs> yes, fit, Fado. Fit for what? Whatever you got in that pig like mine. Sit down, Fado, sit down. I've been looking for a man like you. I want you to meet a friend of mine. Bender, this is C. Fado. Glad to meet you. Cheery sort of bloke. What? Oh, he ain't very cheery, but you get used to him. You have to. He's a friend of mine. Why not? Since you're asking the question, Mr. Bender, you're the one that must answer it, eh? <laughs> have you eaten lunch yet, fellow? Lunch, is it now? <laughs> Getting swank, huh? I haven't had a morsel in three days. Broke your game, fellow, eh? You'll never learn to make your way in this world. You ought to make some plans for yourself. I try, Grigsby. Honest, I do. Bender. Yep. Show this bloke how to pick a pocket, eh? Well, it's simple. Look at the table next to the bar. See the old man there? That's old Peter. He's the caretaker for the largest house in town. He always carries the keys to the silver closet and his money in his left-hand pocket. Why his left pocket? He's left-handed. Live and learn, fatto. Live and learn. Now, all I have to do is walk by him, pass the time of day pleasant-like, pick his pocket... And we'll all have lunch money, and my friend Grigsby will have the silver closet keys. A very important item. Well, what if you get caught? <laughs> Bender <laughs> caught? <laughs> Never. <laughs> I taught him how to do it. Now, watch and learn, me boy. I'll make something out of you yet. I'm watching. Go ahead, Bender. Keep your eye on me. I'll be right back. See the way he walks across the room, just as if he doesn't care? Swaggering, swinging his shoulders like? Yes, I'm watching. He walks easy. Now, look. He stops at the man's table, talks a while, smiling all the time. What's he saying? How should I know, Fanner? No matter what a man says. What matters is he's saying, just saying it. Now, watch his hand there. Stealing into the left pocket there. Ah, he's got it. He has for a fact. Yeah, he's got the wallet. And the keys, too. Oh, it's quite a trick. <laughs> yes, quite a trick. And I taught it to him. If you want to learn something, Fatto, I told you before, stick to Grigsby and you may commit to money. I got big plans for myself this night with old Peter's silver closet keys. Should I uh, count you in? As I've said before, and I'm saying it again, I'm willing to learn. So I stuck with Grigsby and Bender. We left the inn in the late afternoon. Grigsby had big plans on his mind, it seems. 
He was walking fast down the village road toward the biggest house in the town. Me and Bender was walking behind. Come on, you two. Get a move on, will you? Can't walk faster than the legs will go. Uh, having you two on my hands, I'll never get anything done tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, Grigsby, but I'm hurrying as best I can. <laughs> what are you up to? Look at the end of the road there. That's the house ahead of us. You know who that house belongs to? How should I know? It belongs to the richest family in the old county. Uh, family's out of town, I hear. That's right, Bender. Family's out of town. And the only person living there is old Peter and his young granddaughter, Evie. Imagine. Old Peter along, <laughs> alone with a young child. <laughs> yes, imagine. An old man and a young girl without any protection. <laughs> Well, what are you thinking of, Grigsby? Oh, a simple plan, fellow. I've been working on this plan for days. A plan to steal the silver. It's worth a fortune, and it's easier than taking candy from a baby. Now I see why you stole the keys. Well, there's the house. We have to wait around here till midnight. When midnight comes, I'll knock on the door, and old Peter will open it. Then Bender here clubs him over the head. And I goes in. Gets the silver and the money. And we leave town. What about the child? Ah, that's where you come into the plan, fellow. You're a little fellow. Good at crawling through windows. What do I do when I get through the window? Find the child and get her out of the way before she starts to shriek and holler. But I... I ain't no child murder, Grigsby. I ain't. I, I gotta teach you the odd way, Fado. You never learn it all. But, but I... Don't butt me, Fado, or I'll cut your throat for you. I'll cut his throat for him. You heard him, Fado. Bender's good at cutting throats. <laughs> I taught him. But I got a, a wife and kid of me own. I can't go fighting little children. Use I... the knife, Bender. Good idea. No, 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 wait a minute. Now, don't be hasty. I never was a man not to change me mind. Change his mind. So you'll change your mind, eh? I thought you'd come to my way of looking at it. Yeah, look over there, playing in the yard. It's the little girl herself, all alone. Now, if you're smart, fatter, you'll take a word of advice. I don't think I need no advice right now. You might need it this evening when we start to work. Now, talk to the little girl for a while. Find out what room she lives in. And you might even ask what kind of silver the family's hoarding. Ah, uh, she's a pretty little thing. Look at her, playing by herself, nice as you please. <laughs> like a regular little lady. It's uh, easier to kill a child than a grown-up. They die easy, fast. <laughs> Go on, Bender, don't joke with a bloke. He's getting pale. Go on, Fado. Are you going to talk to her or do I have to convince you with me knife? I'll talk to her. We'll just sit over on the side of the road and watch you. I don't need no watching. <laughs> we'll watch anyway. Just walk right up to her and speak. Hello, little girl. Who are you? Who am I? Why, I I I'm a friend of yours. Do you know my grandfather, old Peter? No, not personally. But I, I've heard of him. You know my name? Now, what is your name? Evie. I live in that house over there. It's a right nice house, Evie. Uh, which room is your room? Don't you know? Should I? Of course, everybody knows Evie's room. Grandfather says he says it's because it's a special safe room just for me. Guardian angels watch over me all the time. Of course. <laughs> Where is your room? On the second floor in the back of the building right over the kitchen entrance. There's a special porch off my room. A porch? Yes. Now I told you about me. What about you? What's your name? My name's C. Farrow. C. Farrow? That's a funny name. Where do you live? Any place I can find for me to live. On the grass or in a haystack, in an alley, in a doorway of a shop. Is there a second floor for you to sleep on in all these places? I suppose so, Evie. I like you. Wish I could stay with you longer, but I can't. Well, where are you going? Home. My grandfather told me to come in promptly at five or I'll catch cold. He worries about me awful. He always does. 
Goodbye, Sweet Sparrow. Goodbye, Ivy. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, Evie. Goodbye. Ah, pretty little girl she is. Nice work, Fado. Quite nice work. <laughs> if I say so myself, I couldn't have done a better job. One would almost think the little girl liked you. One would, eh? Well, m maybe she did. That ah, don't make no difference now. We'll just take a look around the grounds and then wait. Eh, Amanda, wait till midnight. Stick around, fella. You're going to learn something tonight. Till midnight. Might even get a few hours sleep. Grigsby led the way, and as I've said, I'm willing to learn. As we walked around the ground, I kept looking at the second floor, and my heart sunk. Child killing. That just ain't in my line. For an hour or so, Grigsby studied the land. And then they led us to a little grove on one side of the field, where we sat down to wait. Fender, the big fella, fell asleep. Grigsby kept one eye on me and one eye on the house. And all of a sudden, I realized it was starting to rain. But rain or no rain, we just waited and waited until the church clock struck twelve. <sighs> fast asleep when Grigsby said, Bender. Hey, Bender. Wake up. It's midnight now. Oh, oh midnight. Uh, so soon. Uh, blast me if it ain't raining. It's been raining for hours. It, we ought to forget the old thing. We ain't forgetting nothing. Come on, fatto. Get on your feet and get a move on. Oh, I'm on my feet. Ready, Bender? I'm right behind you, Grigsby. Well, follow me, both of you. The ground is wet, Grigsby. Not a night to do this job. I'm superstitious about the rain. Shut up. Well, I am. Well, gentlemen, there's the house right ahead of us. Imagine everyone sound asleep. Fellow. Yes, Grigsby? We'll walk you to the back of the house and give you a boost up over the ledge of the kitchen porch. Yes, Grigsby. Go on, go on, get a move on. I'm moving, I'm moving. Shh, both of you. Huh. There's the porch. You think you can climb it, fellow? I don't know. Honest, I don't. Oh, you're better now. Climb up on that ledge and stay there until you hear me pound on the front door. Then what? When I pound on that door, climb in that open window and take care of that kid. She won't feel nothing. Just one quick jab in the heart and <laughs> she's dead. Here, Fatto. Just as a special favor to you, I'll lend you my own knife. Well, go on, take it. Yes, uh, uh, all right, I will. <laughs> well, Fatto, are you ready? I'm as ready as I'll ever be, I suppose. Climb on me back and I'll give you a boost to the ledge. Now, don't forget, Fado, if that child ain't dead, you will be. down, and Grigsby helped me stand on the big man's back. I grasped one pole of the porch, which was just beneath the child's window, and then, pulling myself up inch by inch, I climbed from the ground to the roof of the porch. The pole was wet and slippery, and my fingers were cut by splinters when I reached the porch. Panting and breathless, I just crouched there, waiting. 
I see Grigsby and Bender walk slowly around to the front of the house. Then I notice the window, right in front of me eyes, with little white curtains blowing back and forth, and it brings a tear to my eye. Then I notice a little white bed inside the room, but the room's too dark and I can't see the child nowhere. It seems to me the old world's quiet, and my breathing's as loud as an elephant's. When I hears... Open up, old man! Open up! I'm telling you to open up the door! Wake up, old Peter, wake up! Hey, you old Peter, wake up before I pound the door down! Are you deaf? Well, open up! He sleeps like a log. Uh, he's playing the fox, I guarantee, pretending to be asleep. Wait a minute. If you don't wake up, I'll smash the door! Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Where is he, Grigsby? Up there in that window, right over your head. Oh, there you are, you dimwit. Come on down and open up this here door. Gentlemen, why do you come to wake up honest people at this hour of the night? Stop playing the game, old Peter. Your time has come. You don't open up this door right away. My time? You mean to kill me? If you don't open up the door... Gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm afraid you're too late. A crueler fate than murder has taken the breath from my body. What are you talking about? You see, I'll open up the door, but you'll wish to heaven you'd never visited this house. I'll be right down. What's he talking about, Grigsby? I'm not quite sure, Bender. Not quite sure. I wonder how that fool Fatter was done. Oh, he's done his job, I know Fatter. Uh, I wonder how long he'll keep us waiting in this rain. If he don't answer soon, we'll break in the window on the side of the house. Oh, here he is. Come in. Come into the light where I can see you. Oh, woe unto you, gentlemen, for trespassing this house tonight. What are you talking about, anyway? Look at my face, gentlemen. The black rings under my eyes and the black splotches on my arms. Do you have any idea what that is? Black rings. Black splotches. Blimey, Grigsby. It's the plague. The black plague. Yes, the black plague. That's what it is. This afternoon, late this afternoon, my little granddaughter came in from play. Within four hours, she was dead. Evie dead? Come in, gentlemen. Look. Look. There she lies on the stairs. Grigsby, look. Look well, gentlemen. Because within the half hour... I should be lying by her side. <laughs> oh, oh, the pain. Oh, the pain. It's the plague, Grigsby. I've seen them before. Run, gentlemen. Run to the tanning factory and breathe in the healing fumes of the tannery. The smell of the tan bark and the leather have curative powers. It's too late for me. But if you wish to spare yourself the horrible suffering of the plague, go... Go at once to the tannery and stay there as long as you can. <laughs> oh, the pain. My flesh. The pain. <gasps> oh, the pain. Help me, gentlemen. Help me. The pain. Don't, Help don't, me. Don't touch me, Peter. Come on, Bender. The tanner's factory. As fast as we can run. As fast as we can run. Where's Fatto? Where's Fatto? I'm right behind you, Bender. I was... It's the Black Plague, and nothing can save us. Nothing but the air of the tannery. Let's get there. Hurry, hurry. Brenda. Hi. You sit here, next to me on this pile of tannin waste. Right. Fado? Yes. You sit next to him, and all breathe together now. Odd. One... Two, three. Are you sure the fumes from this tanning vat are good for the Black Plague? I've heard nothing can cure you once you've touched someone who's had it. Oh, I never touched out, Peter. Did you, Bender? Never once. Not even tapped him lightly on the shoulder. But I touched the child. You? you? Yes, and right after that, I touched Bender. Remember Bender? Then I must have it too. Look at me, Grigsby. How do I look? Uh. Not so well as a fact. I don't feel well either. Not well at all. Your, your face does look sort of, uh, wouldn't you say, bloated, Grigsby? I've got it. I've got the plague. That's what I've got. If that must have it too. But nobody touched me. Nobody. Nobody, Ben. I'm still all right. You won't be for long, Grigsby. What are you talking about? I'm going to die. But you ain't going to live. 
You got us into this. I'll rub me hands on your face. That's what I'll do. Rub me hands on your face. No, you don't, you. Give me that knife, Farrow. He argues me. Don't give it to him, Farrow. I got it now. And if you come near me, Bender, you know what'll happen to you. What's the difference now? The plague of the knife makes no difference to me either way. Stay away from me. I won't stay away from you, Grigsby. Me hands are covered with a disease and it'll soon be on your face. You pig, you dog. I'll teach you. You teach me what? The knife. The knife. Don't you. I'll take care of him for a long time to come. <gasps> Bender's dead. And we'll be with him in a short time, Grigsby. Oh, the plague. The Black Plague. What can I do, Farrow? Oh, I don't know rightly, Grigsby. I'm just sitting here watching you, waiting to see. Maybe I'll learn something. The leather scraps. Maybe if I, I rub myself with the leather scraps. Maybe if I... Farrow, I, I don't want to die. Not yet. I, I don't want to die. I, I'm the greatest thief that ever lived. Clever, too. Nobody ever beat Grigsby before, nobody. Nobody ever did before, Grigsby. Well, they ain't going to this time. No, they ain't. Well, maybe the Black Plague's got more power than you have. You can't fight the plague, Grigsby. <sighs> Is me face turning black? Uh, I can't rightly tell you. Me eyes. How do me eyes look? Uh, red and swollen. Oh, any black rings around them? Oh, give it time. It takes time for the Black Plague to grow. Time. Time. If you'll sit still, it won't be half as painful to die. Maybe, maybe if I breathe deeply. Uh, that won't do any good. What do I have to die? I guess you do. I guess you do. But don't worry. You'll have plenty of warning before you die. The pain will tell you. The screaming pain. The pain. The screaming pain. And then Grigsby collapsed, crying like he was a baby. I sat there for one whole hour, watching Grigsby. Bender was dead. As the time slowly passed and the night became morning, I, I noticed a group of men heading toward us. They were carrying guns. And I poked Grigsby in the ribs. Hi, Grigsby, somebody's coming. Uh, what's the difference now, fellow? Uh, you'll find out. Hello over there. Hello. Mr. Grigsby! Mr. Grigsby! What's he want? I don't know. Ask him. I'm Mr. Grigsby! Oh, yes, Grigsby. And are you Mr. Farrow? That's what they call me. And the man with the knife in him is Mr. Bender, I presume. You'll have to take my word for it. You can't ask a dead man no questions. Gentlemen, in the name of the law, you're under arrest. Seize them, boy. Wait a minute! Arrested! For what? For what? For what? For what am I arrested? For what? For housebreaking and plotting against the life of a child. And now it's for murder. How do you know all these things? How do I know? He told me. Old Peter? Yes, I told him, Mr. Grigsby. You? You told him? I thought you were dead of the Black Plague. I know you did. I wanted you to think so. It took a lot of trouble painting on black spots with kitchen charcoal. Ch charcoal? <laughs> Let me go. Let me go. I wouldn't try that, Mr. Grigsby. But, but Levy, she was dead of the plague. I saw myself lying on the steps, dead as can be. Levy was sound asleep in her own bed. You saw a dressmaker's dummy wrapped in cloth and smudged with charcoal lying on the steps. And I thought I was dying, that's what I thought. Bender thought he was dying too. You, you fado. You were the one who told us we had the plague. You did. You were the one who gave me the knife to kill Bender. You I you, always you, told you, Grigsby, I'm willing to learn. You, you climbed through the window to kill the child, yes. You must have known. She wasn't dead. Yes, I knew she wasn't dead. She was lying in her bed, smiling at me as I came through the window. Smiling and laughing. And, and she told me where to find her grandfather. Find him? Yes, find him. And the two of us got together and got an idea. An idea about the plague. Me knowing how afraid you always are of being sick. You double-crossed me, that's what. I promised I'd kill if you double-crossed me and I... Yeah, come along, Grigsby, and you're under arrest. And you too, fellow. 
Take them away, boys. Mr. Officer, don't take Mr. Farrow away. See, I... Farrow's my friend. I don't think there's any charge against Farrow, Mr. Officer. I'll kill him. Come my... on, come yeah, on, Grigsby. Right. There's a nice jail cell waiting for you. I'll get you for this someday, Farrow, that I will. Drag them away, boys, and don't waste any more time oh, with him. Oh, uh, Miss Evie. Yes, Mr. Officer. I have a special job for you. From now on, Mr. Farrow here is in your charge. Oh, thank you, Mr. Officer. I like C. Farrow. And I like you too, Evie. Grandpa, Grandpa, can we ask Mr. Farrow to my birthday party today? I don't see why not, Evie child. <laughs> I think he deserves a piece of birthday cake. <laughs> oh, well, blimey, if it hasn't been a long time since my mouth tasted birthday cake. Uh, what do you intend to do in this town, Mr. Farrow? Settle down here and, and get employment? I'll do anything, old Peter. Anything, as long as I've enough to keep a roof over me head and food in me stomach. If you've got any ideas, I'm willing to learn. I think I might have some ideas, Mr. Farrow. It's just possible that Evie and I both might. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought to you the immortal tale, The Great Plague. Bellkeeper, toll the bell. 